Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you this drawing of Marlon Brando, the classic actor. It was done in a combination of graphite and charcoal. Let's have a look. So this time we have a full scene. It's not going to be a vignette or a regular portrait. There's going to be a bit of background. Uh, he is looking through the window. And uh, I'm going to have to do some shading on the background. And that's one of the reasons why I chose this combination of graphite and charcoal, because I'm going to have some very light areas in the background around the windows and on the walls. And I just thought that graphite would be a little bit more suitable for that than charcoal. And I'm also going to use the ruler a little bit. To draw these straight lines because I have some of these boards on the walls and also I need to make the window look as straight as possible. So I'm going to do some shading under each and every one of these boards on the walls. But I'm going to talk, uh, talk about that uh, a bit more later. And I normally don't like to use rulers and other tools for drawing either curved or straight lines, but this time I decided to make an exception because I really, uh, I really needed to draw quite a few of these straight lines in the background. I didn't really start working on drawing Marlon himself just yet. There's just a little bit of a sketch but I just made some indication of his hair but I'm first going to do this left side of the background and I'm going to do some light shading on the wall here with a 2 edge pencil. It's, it's a very very light color, very light value and I'm working off an old reference photo that doesn't really have too much detail in it, although it's not of such bad quality. So I, sh I did most of the shading here with a 2H uh, and an HP graphite pencil and then I used a Tutilian for blending. So I'm just uh, blending and I'm drawing a bit of shadow under each and every one of these separate boards. I'm using a bit of black colored pencil for this. So even though it's a black and white drawing, I'm using mixed media, if you will. Uh, most of the the central part of the drawing is going to be done in charcoal because I have some areas of much darker value there. But pay attention to the way that I'm shading these boards. I'm shading them so that I can create a feeling like they're kind of uh, sticking outwards at the bottom and um, there's a bit of shadow where they they are joined together. <coughs> Sorry. And I skipped over a part of the video. I didn't really record the entire process even though I did record most of it. So I did most of the shading on the left side of the background and I think that the wall and the left side of the window looks pretty good and that's why I'm moving on to Marlon himself um, I'm doing a series of drawings of this actor I already did a few drawings of him a few months back so I'm going to do a few more and here I'm mostly going to work in a combination of compressed charcoal and vine charcoal I am I'm going to use the compressed charcoal and charcoal pencils, woodless charcoal pencils, to do most of the drawing. But here on the hair, I'm also using some vine charcoal to establish some um, base tone, if you will, some dark value for his hair. And there's also going to be some highlights on the hair, but before I do that, I have to put down some areas of darker value. His hair is very messy here. 
he has kind of a careless but also pensive look here in this uh, in this photo that I'm working from so I'm going to try to capture that look as as best as I can and now I'm using a soft charcoal pencil to put in these darker areas of shadow in his hair so I'm trying to break the hair into some segments of hair and make the whole structure a little more interesting and I'm mostly blending that either with totillions or brushes before I move in with uh, with erasers to pull these highlights. The size of the paper is 9 times 12 inches. So basically my regular size. That's the size that I draw on in 99% of the cases and most of the most of the videos that I make are drawings that that were done on that size of the paper. The paper that I'm using is a fairly smooth uh, 190 GSM paper. So it's a fairly thick and fairly smooth paper. It's a local brand that you probably can't buy elsewhere but you can buy something similar I guess even though as I always say I find that uh, with charcoal the paper isn't really that important because most types of paper work well with charcoal it's just that I really prefer thicker paper and I also like the paper to be smooth if possible because I want to be able to control the amount of texture that I'm creating. I'm working on the eye on the left. The eyes are a little bit challenging because uh, he has long eyelashes and he's kind of looking upwards so uh, it's uh, it's kind of difficult for me to uh, make out in the reference photo where the eyelashes end and the, the rest of the eye socket area begins but I'm doing the best I can to draw this area with as much precision as I can and to shade it properly and I'm also doing a bit of shading around the eye using a totillion um, there's also a bit of a reflection in the eyes but I'm not really sure how much is go it's going to be visible in this eye on the left on the right it's going to be a little bit more conspicuous so I'm doing the other eyebrow now I'm going to move on to the other eye I also made some indications of, of those uh, skin folds or wrinkles uh, on the forehead so there's the other eye and like I said uh, there's uh, there's going to be a slightly more noticeable reflection in the eye there. Uh, making some more indications of these um, wrinkles. And now I'm using a pencil eraser to pull some highlights on the hair. And I really want to emphasize how messy that hair looks. So it's kind of um, unkempt like he didn't really comb it for quite some time or maybe he just got out of bed that's the look that I'm trying to achieve and now moving on to the sweater or the shirt whatever it is that he's wearing and I'm first going to use the soft charcoal pencil for some of these darker areas because whenever you're drawing clothes there's going to be some folds which are going to be areas of darker value and there's going to be some areas raised areas of lighter value so if you want to make those folds in the clothes look realistic and 3D you have to create that range of value between the raised and the lower areas lowered areas which are in the shadow and uh, once I establish some of these darker areas where the folds are and once I shade the darkest areas which are deeper in the shadow and further away from the light source 
I'm just going to go over everything with a medium charcoal pencil and then I'm going to blend everything in. So right now it looks a little bit lighter than it ought to be but once I start blending it's going to get pretty dark. So here I just showed you how it looks when it's finished. It's I didn't really do too much work to it other than just uh, blending. I'm moving on to the rest of the face. And here my fo my footage is a little bit blurry. I was having some minor problems with my lighting. So I apologize for that, but let me just explain quickly what I'm doing. I'm trying to find an edge uh, where, the, uh, where the chin is so that I can explain the shape of the face a little bit better. And I'm also going around the eye on the right, drawing some of the eyelashes and the uh, lower edge of that eye. as well as doing some shading around the eye and on the eye socket. So there's a, also a bit of a shadow coming from the nose um, which is kind of being casted on the on that left cheek and around the mouth and there's, there's also going to be a bit of shadow under the nose and above the upper lip But right now I'm just doing some finer shading to try to establish some of the um, some of the slightly larger areas of darker value on the face. But in addition to that, I'm also um, working around some of the details, and I even used a touch of uh, graphite pencil for some of the lighter areas. Later I can always go back and pull some highlights using a pencil eraser. The pencil eraser I'm using is a Kohinoor pencil eraser. Uh, the pencils, the graphite pencils are mostly Kohinoor or Stadler's and uh, the black colored pencil that I use occasionally is a Primo. And the charcoal pencils that I use are usually either Kohinoor charcoal pencils or woodless, Warrison woodless charcoal pencils. So these are just some of my materials, but you can use any other brand. Um, that's not really that important. The thing that's important is to remember how or to learn how you can combine mixed media because that's probably the biggest challenge and what you need to understand when you're combining charcoal with graphite for example is that graphite is a lubricant and it usually won't allow you to apply charcoal over it so easily so it's better to work in charcoal first and then add uh, lighter areas of graphite although you don't necessarily have to do that because uh, this also involves all the planning so for example, the background on the left was done mostly, almost, almost entirely in graphite, and I knew that I wasn't going to mix that with charcoal, as so I did all of that in graphite and simply moved on to my main subject, which is mostly going to be done in charcoal. And here I'm usually not going to have a problem combining these two different types of media. So I'm working a little bit more on the face, making sure that the proportions look close to my reference photo and that the amount of value in different parts of the face also looks close to what I'm trying to achieve. There's also a little bit of shadow under these banks that I need to create. And I'm, I'm shading the mouth, the chin, the eyes, making sure that the eyes are big enough and now I'm working a little bit on these uh, wrinkles on the forehead again in order to make them look uh, more 3D and give them a bit more depth I'm shading in between them 
because you can't just uh, represent them with a line in real life you can't really see lines it's mostly shapes and lighting so even when you're drawing wrinkles you have to kind of explain to the viewer what that line means and that there's some kind of a shape there and later I'm going to go back in with a pencil eraser in between these uh, wrinkles to make them kind of raised and stand out which is exactly what I'm doing now I'm also trying to clean up some of these uh, shadows around the nose as well as the edge or the shape of the nose itself I drew a small highlight on the nose to make it kind of stand out and feel more three-dimensional uh, so right now I'm mostly shading using a combination of brushes and uh, and an eraser an eraser is an important shading tool when drawing portraits because it allows you to do negative drawing and to take away a bit of value where needed so that you can draw highlights and so that you can draw some uh, prominent parts of the face which are kind of closer to the light source and I'm just uh, adding a few more details to the hair so not all of my subjects are equally interesting to a regular viewer so Marlon Brando is an old famous actor not particularly popular among younger people nowadays I'm not even sure if um, they've seen some of his movies there are probably there, there's probably a large percentage of my viewers who haven't even heard of the guy but back in the day he was uh, one of the most popular actors and also one of the most uh, attractive ones to the ladies I covered this area on the inside of the window with some soft charcoal and left uh, some of the white space for, for these lighter details and cleaned them up a little bit with a pencil eraser but this area to the right of his head needed to be very dark and I'm not really sure if I should have isolated him entirely and created another vignette I wanted to have a little bit of background but maybe that was a mistake we'll see how it turns out because I usually like my a subject to stand out from uh, against the white of the paper as much as possible but here because we have an area of dark value it's very important for me to shade the face uh, with, a, with a sufficient amount of value and to show um, a sufficient amount of depth and volume in my main subject so that uh, so that the the background doesn't really steal the viewer's attention uh, immediately. I'm moving on to this watch, which has uh, quite a few of these smaller details. I'm just going to try to simplify that a little bit and draw the bla bracelet here. And then I'm going to move on to shading the arm and the hand. So I'm drawing some shadows in between the fingers as well as the shadow around the knuckles. Here I decided to add a little bit of vine charcoal which I'm going to spread around to create a sufficient amount of value so that I can later flesh out some of the details on that hand. It's very important to spend enough time working on the hands because um, people usually neglect neglect them and they are or they can be a very important part of the portrait or a drawing and if you give them some attention they will actually improve the overall appearance of the drawing quite a bit and if you oversimplify them they could ruin the whole drawing so that's one thing to keep in mind
So once again, I'm doing most of this in time lapse. I played some of the some parts of the footage with a slower speed so that you can follow or understand some of my technique. If you really feel like you need to see how the drawing process goes in real time, and if you want to see longer or full length videos, you may want to check out my Patreon. On my Patreon channel I have dozens of videos which are full length and uh, narrated. So if you want to observe the drawing technique in real time and if you want to listen to a slightly longer and more elaborate narration and explanations, you should check out my Patreon. And if you don't want to go uh, to my Patreon page and if you don't, don't want to pay anything, you can always uh, uh, watch my videos here and you can actually learn a thing or two from them as well. Uh, so I did most of the shading on the body and the background behind him and uh, now I'm just uh, pulling some highlights on the sweater. A lot of it is fairly dark so there's not really too much detail that I need to put in and now I'm going to start working on the forearms and the hands. And I'm also adding a bit of shadow under the hand here on the window sill. Adding a touch more value here on the window. As you can see, I often use my finger for blending, so I like to use a variety of blending tools and each and every one of them has their advantages and disadvantages and I talked about that in a separate video where I talked about the effects of blending tools so you can see that here as well as my other videos I don't like to limit myself to only one type of a blending tool I like to utilize all of their advantages and the advantage of brushes is that they have a nice coverage and they allow you to create smooth transitions uh, but here I am working on some of his um, forearms and uh, there's a, also a little bit of ha hair on them as well even though I'm not really sure how much that's going to be visible but I'm just going to add some indications of hair to make the texture and the appearance of the skin a little more interesting. I don't know exactly how long the entire drying process took. It's usually more than two hours, so this one may have been even more. And uh, I tried to show as much of the footage as possible. So again, I'm shading the knuckles and the, the fingers on this hand and drawing some of the... emphasizing some of the darker areas. Here I'm also using a combination of both uh, charcoal and graphite and a black colored pencil. And when I finish the shading I always uh, use a pencil eraser to draw some of the highlights or lighter areas like for example on the knuckles and things like that. So I hope I got the hands to look um, convincing. I didn't oversimplify them, but I didn't also want to spend too much time working on them. I spent most of the time working on the face, and I'm going to have to make some modification to the face as well. But right now I'm just finishing the background, and I'm doing the same thing that I did on the other side, but here because of the angle, uh, the, sh the, sh the shadows between these uh, boards are going to look slightly different and again I'm mostly using a combination of a couple of graphite pencils so th this part of the background isn't super important but I don't want to mess it up I still want to make it look uh, nice and shade it in a realistic manner and I'm also going to add some indications of damage 
on the window maybe create a rough edge here and there just to make the whole scene a little more interesting <coughs> and uh, after that I'm going to put down some finishing touches and see if I can refine the whole drawing uh, a little bit I also, um, once I finish this I need to remove the tape and get rid of that board and all I have left is to sign the drawing but I'm just going to do a couple of more modifications to the face I felt like the jaw was a little bit too wide in this area Marlon gained quite a bit of weight later in his career but he he was still very young and very fit in this picture so I tried to shave off a few kilograms and also I feel like his hair was even messier in my reference photo so I'm gonna add even more volume on the top of his head to capture that random messy look and hopefully that should do it so I'm just refining some of the details maybe uh, the lip needs to be a slightly thicker the upper lip here and maybe a little more shadow on this side of the nose so these are just some some of the finishing touches I'm almost finished here <clears throat> and I'm cleaning up some of the edges like for example within the forearm and uh, the the sweater so because I want to create a nice clean edge and nice contrast there also double checking if I've shaded the area around the eyes properly and if the eyes look to be of proper size so I'm just taking my time to modify some of these details but the drawing is mostly finished please subscribe if you haven't already give me a like and comment let me know what you think and also don't forget to check out my other videos because I have dozens if not hundreds of other videos I'll see you in the next one bye for now